the text spoken by the voices and the sound volume are exactly the same as in the original recording. To help the ear adapt itself to the strange rhythm, rapidity and softness of the voice entity's speech, each utterance is repeated several times. The voices here selected are grouped according to the persons addressed and their respective answers, followed by a translation and explanation. They are examples chosen to give the reader a breakthrough, an acoustic illustration of the material presented in the book. The listener is asked to read any text spoken in languages he does not know with particular attention so that he may be able to grasp each separate word phonetically. Please note the commentary that goes with each voice text as the meaning of some utterances can only be understood in context with the situation that gave rise to them. The first voice is that of Margarete Petrowski, who had told the experimenter during her lifetime that she did not believe in an existence after death. After her passing, the experimenter asked her how she felt in the beyond, and a voice, identified as coming from Margarete, answered, Bedenke, ich bin. German, imagine, I am. Again we hear Margarete Petrowski's voice, this time calling her former employer, Dr. Zenta Maurina. Zenta. Now the experimenter asks if Margarete can hear him, and the voice replies, Kostya, ja. German, Kostya, yes. The voice then calls the experimenter's family name, Raudive, but shortens it to Raudiv. And now we hear in Latvian and German, Koste, tu tick na. Koste, you are so near. Now the experimenter calls the Russian poet Vladimir Mayakovsky, and the voice answers. Mayakovsky. The experimenter tells the poet how difficult it is to convince people of the reality of the voice phenomenon. And in reply comes a statement which is typical for Mayakovsky's personality. Konstantin, Pluy. In Russian, Konstantin, spit on it. The experimenter talks to his former teacher, the Spanish philosopher Ortega y Gasset, and the voice calls out, Ortega. The experimenter asks whether the research into the voice phenomenon had any significance and whether it was based on firm foundations. The voice answers, Entrojas muchas cuestiones. <laughs> 
Spanish, you will solve many questions. A Latvian voice then breaks in with a statement that could be interpreted in various ways. It might mean, for instance, that the voice phenomenon research may benefit mankind even if the process is a painful one. Tu laudes zadetzina. Latvian, you are burning people. The experimenter addresses his former collaborator, the Swiss parapsychologist Professor Gebhard Frey. Beset by doubts, the experimenter begs Professor Frey to give his name, and a voice answers, Frey. 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 Then, in Swedish and German, Du sowas willst nicht glaube. You are sleeping. You do not want to believe. In another recording, the experimenter remarks that people do not believe in life after death, and a voice answers, So sind sie. German, that's how they are. The experimenter calls on Vitaut's Simane, a friend who had died a short time before the recording was made, and receives the following answer. Danke, gute morning. German and English. Thank you, good morning. Then the friend gives his name, Vitauts Simane. After this comes a request. Prasi Centa Lai Tala. Latvian and Swedish beg Zenta to speak. And then Musu Zenta Rezisos. Latvian, our center is the producer. Lastly, this voice says, Sie glaubt nicht. German, she does not believe. Once again, the experimenter addresses Professor Gebhard Frey and asks, whether he thinks the voice phenomenon research necessary and what, in the professor's opinion, its final goal should be. A voice replies, Oui, c'est nécessité. French and English, yes, it's a necessity. The voice urges the experimenter Konstantin, arbeiten. German, Konstantin, do work. The voice then calls Konstantin.
And lastly, Raudive. The following section deals with examples of voices grouped according to the various recording methods. In collaboration with technical experts, the experimenter has evolved six different methods of recording. A. Microphone B. Radio frequency C. Frequency transmitter D. Diode E. Goniometer and F. Psychophon the reader will find details about the various types in the appropriate section of Breakthrough. Microphone Voices The experimenter states that in his opinion man cannot grasp the events after death with his intellect or even with his intuition. A voice replies in German, Er kann. Er kann. He can. At the end of a recording session, the experimenter says that he is tired. A voice comes in with Bonne Nut. French and Swedish. Good night. A request by the experimenter that the voice entities should tell him from where they came is answered by a voice saying, Seelisches Land. German, land of the soul. Radio frequency voices. Professor Loritz, who was a close friend of the experimenter, promised that he would manifest, if possible, after death. We hear a voice say, Loritz, hier nach Sklat. Latvian, Loritz will join. A female voice, probably Margarete Petrowski's, says, Eine Notote. German and English, one who is not dead. Frequency transmitter voices. Coste, tu te tova mote. This is Latgalian. Coste, here is your mother. Te tu. Raxniex Padot Mayu. <laughs> Latvian. You are the author here. Give me a house. Diode voices. The voice of an entity whom the experimenter does not know, but who calls herself Agnes, a helper, probably remarks here on unfavorable recording conditions. Agnes, furchtbar slicked. German and Latvian. Agnes, terribly bad. A voice, later identified as that of a man who lived and died in a place called Kirnbach in the Black Forest, Germany, says, 
Wartet auf Walter von Kirnbach. German. Wait for Walter from Kirnbach. A voice calls James Joyce. Now a voice, which may be Winston Churchill's, says, Mark you, make believe, my dear, yes. Followed by Winston Churchill. The following sentence, heard at the end of a recording session, indicates that the voice entities have their own transmitting stations. Wat nun? Gute Nacht von Citadi. Russian and German. Now good night from Citadi. Goniometer Voices. This recording method was developed by Theodor Rudolf, an electrical engineer specializing in high frequencies. He has himself recorded the following examples, which have been taken from a total of approximately 90 voice texts received by him. The voices have the same characteristic features as those recorded by other methods. It is interesting to note that the voices in these examples speak mainly Russian and Latvian, two languages unknown to Mr. Rudolf. German is used more rarely. The texts have been deciphered by the experimenter after Mr. Rudolf had verified the experimenter's name and some German words. A Russian voice says, On prosil bulku vo snie. On sapielu 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 bulku vo snie. He begged for bread in a dream. A statement referring to an acquaintance of the experimenter, whose name is Kankan, -Kan, and probably meaning that life lasts but a moment. Tu stunda, kan kan. Latvian, you are but a moment, kan kan. Psychophone voices. This method was evolved by Franz Seidel electrical engineer from Vienna. His apparatus has produced some very plainly audible voices. These bear the same typical traits as all other voices recorded by different methods. Again Russian and Latvian are the main languages used, together with some German, though Mr. Seidel also does not speak either Russian or Latvian. The word flusigon, which is used in the following sentence, does not exist in the German language. It may be a corruption of the word fluidum, which means, in a symbolical sense, atmosphere or magnetism. The voice says, Du hast kein Flussigon. German. You have no flusigon. Now a Latvian voice. Tauta must yes. People awake. And in answer to a question as to who is speaking, a voice replies, Toti.
distorted german the dead